hello everybody what's going on you guys if this is your first time stumbling across my channel you are watching episode 12 of my series called zangita's tea if this is your first time seeing me um i'm looking down because i have a laptop in front of me but what this is is an advice series yes so with my advice series mm, this is a classic advice series i'm sure you've seen series like these on youtube my series is a little different honestly it's really not that different <laughs> so every time i start the series i do like a quick little four or five minute introduction just kind of say hey give a little life update and all that but if this is your first time seeing me on here what i do is i have people submit stories to the email down below because i am a smaller channel i do not receive stories just yet i have received one and i'll link the story the, the episode down in the link below I'll link it in the description below i don't know why i can't talk today but yes guys i am gonna be doing three to four stories i usually do three to four stories every episode this is episode 12 i'm really excited to get started just a big disclaimer so more now than ever i need you guys to submit stories to the email below okay i don't know if you've heard this yet but reddit is really cracking down on who uses their stories what you're using like copyrights everything um and i forgot to mention because i i'm so used to just doing this and just assuming that everybody knows but yes because i'm a smaller channel i get my stories from reddit and other places until i can finally get stories submitted to the email below the reason i don't use the stories in my emails because i don't have any so please now more than ever please submit stories because like i said reddit and all the mother like they are cracking down okay unfortunately unfortunately them bigger youtubers which i'm kind of frustrated about y'all could have people submit stories to y'all y'all could some people just don't want to do the work of making an email searching it every day proofreading so that's why people on reddit are getting serious about it like um they want you to ask permission um sometimes subreddits are like don't come in here if you're about to take your stories and our stories and put it on youtube type shit like it's very serious so i will say this right now if there have been any stories that i mentioned in the past on my channel that belong to you and you do not want me to keep them up here no more please let me know and i'll get rid of them with that also being said i have done my homework and i have looked to make sure that all the stories i'm reading there's an understanding that these stories could be used. Um, I've always kept it anonymous. I never message these people and like I never do anything malicious. So of course, if I read anything from today, from the past, moving forward, and you want it off of my channel, let me know. I have zero problems with taking it off. Like, you know what I mean? So I like to read these because I'm simply just building my portfolio. But my ultimate goal would be, of course, to have submissions you know because who you know, i don't really it at the back of at the end of the day i do feel a little funny because it's like then no one personally submitted these to me but it's like how can you give advice and show people that you can give advice if you don't have any stories to read you know what i'm saying so i could sit here and then it seems like i'm a story time channel if i just put a bunch of story times out but that's not what i'm trying to do okay also if this is your first time being here i do do the Zanji Does Tea series, but I also do a lot of hair videos. And if you wanted to follow me on all of my social media platforms, okay, I just had a pause because I was like, there's I'm on so many at this point. I'm just trying to be out there. I'm just trying to put my face out there. But yes, I'll put them all on the screen. It's a lot of them. Okay. All right. All the same username though, so that's perfect, right? A little background. I don't really have anything going on in life right now. Yeah. I'm honestly like, meh. You know, you're, you know when you're in that place of life, you're just like, Ugh, life is happening and I'm just kind of going with the flow. But yeah, guys, like I said, if this is your first time seeing me, welcome. I hope you like it. I hope you like the advice I have to give. And please, by all means, at the end, please submit a story if you loved what I had to say. Because, like I said, we're trying to, we're trying to retire from reddit because i respectfully understand that you know like people can the and don't listen if you if you find a story and you don't want it on my ch channel please don't do all that extra shit like i don't get paid for this yet you know what i'm saying i'm not being malicious about this tell me and i will remove your story happily like i don't want it to be nasty you know attitude drama i don't want any of that like simply i'm a respectful person i'm a creative myself and if you don't want it here that's fine 
okay i just really wanted to say that disclaimer and i really want to let all the other youtubers know like be careful when y'all do this now moving forward because some people know some people don't so let's just let's just get started usually i do have a cute little drink and a plant i have sometimes my cat will visit and harass me today today that's not really happening i just have my water my water some cute nails and this really fuzzy sweater that's today's vibe okay so i'm trying to see i have all my stories in front of me i don't i always don't know where to start honestly i'm gonna start with this one the title is kind of funny and i hope they weren't being serious but okay the first story of today is when i was younger i tried to poison one of my uncles they say when I was a kid, maybe 10 or 12, my uncle would drink from the same cup all day, every day. Oh, leave him alone. Like, <laughs> I didn't dislike him or anything. Yes, you did. Rude. I just wanted to see if it would work. I poured peroxide in his cup, lots of it. I then mixed in some random stuff I found in his room, hand sanitizer, rubbing alcohol, even shaving cream. I mixed it all up and then left hoping to hear some kind of suffering coming from his room. Yeah, what are you on? I didn't dislike him or anything, but I'm going to wait to see if I hear some suffering outside. Like, you wanted to hear suffering? Like, I don't... Turns out you can smell all of these things, and little me didn't think about that. He poured it out and never thought anything of it and never asked any questions. I'm sorry, if I was Unk, I would have been like, what are you doing? what is your goal talk to my sister like get your kid mm. okay let me so sometimes what i'll do is i'll read the comments see what people say so somebody was like i try the same thing to my mom less deadly she would always make me get her soda and i would put salt in it i wasn't allowed to have salt due to medical conditions so i thought it would make her sick like it did to me the mom said my soda isn't supposed to be salty but i would just drink it anyway girl <laughs> Yeah, someone said, your, you, your uncle laughed off the fact that you were trying to murder him. Right, because what, what is that? Someone said, the cops are on their way as we speak. No, literally, because what? Right, that first story was a little silly, kind of funny, kind of weird. But let's get into the second one. This one's a little longer. Okay, let's read it. The title of the second story is, I've told people, I'm sorry, sometimes people just don't know how to write so let me re rephrase it. Literally, this is what it literally says. I've told people saying my dad was dead, but really he's alive. So this person, the title of this is, I've told people my dad was dead when really he's, he's still alive. Why? I'm 18. Recently had been dealing with mental health issues. Past... Okay, sorry. This person is... Maybe there's a language barrier here, but I'm going to try my best to read this. Some weeks have passed, um, and it's been a roller coaster of, em of emotions. I just turned 18 a few months ago. I have a month and a few weeks of school left, and he has a lot of pressure he's dealing with. A few hours ago, I was walking home after I ran for about 45 minutes. He was working out. He got a phone call from Texas. He picks up the phone, and he said hello. And at the end of the line, someone said, remember me, son? It was my dad, and all of a sudden, I was surprised that he decided to call me. Last time we talked was six years ago. This was when I was in sixth grade. Now I'm a senior. I could feel my heart pumping, had anxiety. Then they go for background. My parents, my mom is 23. She's now 43. My dad was 22. He's now 42. My mom was fresh out of college. My father never went to college, Started and he started working right after high school. My dad didn't want to leave the house one time. Oh my God, I'm, I'm trying so hard. My dad didn't want to leave the house and invited my mom at the, invited my mom over. Okay, basically he's saying that the mom and the dad linked up one day and they did a hit it and quit it sneaky link. And then basically he's trying to say that his mom was pregnant and didn't know she was pregnant and she was doing shit like she wasn't pregnant. Moving on, so back to present time, the father said, how has life been? And he's like, it's amazing until you decided to call. Oh, and he's like, I know that was rude of me, but knowing what I've been through the 18, last 18 years, three months and 13 days, <laughs> that he just basically felt miserable. And he felt like his dad was dead to him. 
Apparently, the dad also left the mom for another woman when he was six months old. The dad is a liar, promised to do fatherly things, and never did it. Mm. So the son is basically G-checking the dad over the phone, and now the son starts crying over the phone, and the dad was like, I never thought you'd care about what I did. And then he's like, I told, he told, he tells the dad, I even told people that you died six years ago from the last time that I heard from you because sometimes it makes me feel like he would end up like his dad one day, so he didn't even want to say his dad existed. Yeah, that was, I'm so sorry about the stuttering and everything. I'm just trying really hard to read this. Um, let's get into the comments. So basically, it, it, to wrap up the story, it seems like this guy's going through a lot. He's getting ready for graduation. He's 18, about to graduate high school. And his dad comes and calls him, ruining it, you know, whatever. Like, he's already feeling anxiety about graduation, I'm sure. Getting ready for college, all that stuff. And then here comes his dad on some, hey, son. You know what I mean? And his son is like, you know, and then he confesses, honestly... I told people you died. Like, that's how much I'm not trying to fuck with you. Right? So he's just like, comes to Reddit. And he's like, can y'all just tell me what to do? Because I don't fucking know. Right? So somebody said, honestly, as long as you're taking conscious dis decisions, you will never be like your father. Just try to be better than him. Someone also said, I also told people my dad died. Okay, someone said something really great. They said, never let anyone live rent free in your head. So here's my advice for this person and anyone who might go through a situation like this. When it comes to anyone, anyone messaging you randomly, and it's been so many years, and whether you lied and said they died or they were dead to you, you have the power in your hands. You know, you don't need to force yourself to say anything to these people. Um, I always say never forget how a person made you feel never forget what a person put you through do you miss the memories or do you miss the person like these are all questions you have to give yourself i'm very like when i cut someone off i will you'll feel it it's very cold turkey it's very like you know it's like you'll make it'll be very clear that you're not supposed to hit me up again you know and you could go that route or if you're someone that's like come to me when you've grown like it's really about what you say and showing people your expectations and really setting up a boundary like no you know it's like I told you xyz it is what it is you know what I'm saying so that's kind of my general advice for situations like that don't let anyone come in and be like there's definitely people in my like skeletons in my closet that I'm like you like they know don't hit don't hit her up because she is not gonna respond or she's not gonna have a good anything positive to say like I've had someone hit me up I think it was last year and they hit me up and I was like <laughs> who do you think you are? Like, yeah, I was like, I don't want to talk to you. Like, I never, never said that. I don't know why you thought that. I don't know what was implied. Like, no. You know, and that's the thing is people like to hit you up when you're doing great, when they see you're doing fine for yourself, when they notice that they don't, you don't need them. Ridiculous. My assumption is that this dad probably knows that he's about to graduate high school and wants to be there for his son. And it's like, so say that, you know, and it's like adults have this thing where they don't, or at least the generation above me, which is adults, because I'm 25, so like 40, 50 and up. <sighs> the communication is horrible. Like, just say what it is. Hey, I'm talking, I'm hitting you up because I know you're graduating soon. I would love to be a part of that. I would love to sit down and talk to you and see, you know, how things have been. Apologize for my things. And that's the thing, too, is people like to just talk to you and think that past or history is going to be erased. And that's just, no. No. I hate that. That is such a pet peeve of mine is when people message you on some. Anyway, so, excuse me what were we just last talking about and people do that a lot people do that a lot like don't when you tell people you're not the one then they don't try you you know what i'm saying so that's just my advice at the end of the day always i don't know who's beeping but it's aggravating okay so third story of the day this person's the title of this one says i got someone fired and i never told anyone about it comment down below have you ever got someone fired i don't think i'm ready to tell this story ever I'm not friends with her anymore, but 
she did get fired accidentally accidentally because of me yeah basically i got guilt tripped like the supervisor tripped me up asked hey where's your friend so and so and i'm like oh yeah they're here you know they should be at work soon you know and i thought it was so innocent because this manager was cool with me manager was cool with the girl and he was kind of like he's kind of being an a-hole he was kind of on some like well i'm tired i'm tired of giving this girl chances like why aren't you at work right now and then you know but i really didn't know his motive yeah i'm so sad like when he told me that i was like don't do that like don't don't fire her and he was just like no like when you have your own business and when you have employees you'll understand blah, blah. and i was just like and then after that i was just like mm, that's what we're doing it's a long story guys but i did not mean to get oh my god i don't even know if i want to put this in this episode but um comment down below if you've ever done that now if you've done it purposely you know you ain't right you know you ain't right me is different okay i wasn't i obviously love my friend i wanted to work with her so when that happened i was like what the fuck anyways this person said i got someone fired and never told anyone about it i used to work for this job where we drove trucks around okay period on one day i was driving a truck and i had to squeeze in between a small gate i got through the gate fine however on the way back i scratched the left side of the car I didn't report it because I didn't think anyone would notice. Never fucking do that. Okay, listen. I'm going to tell y'all. You know what? When I stop working at this place, I will tell y'all. But don't, when you get in a car accident or whatever you do, don't fucking leave and don't just, oh, no one noticed it and then keep going. Do not. Like, that is, if there's any adulting tip I can give you, own up to your shit, show up to where you got to show up, say what you did, own that shit with your chest, and you can avoid so many problems. Like, just don't do that. A couple of days later, I get called into my boss's office and they have me fill out a report saying that I didn't know about this damage and I drove the truck before it happened. So lie on paper. Apparently, someone else drove the truck after me and it got reported while they were driving it. It was also his third strike and he got fired after that. I never told anyone that I caused the damage to the car. I didn't think someone would get fired because of my damage. I worked at the job for another six months knowing I got some dude fired and I would feel bad when they would bring him up and say that they miss him. Well, I don't feel that bad. I didn't cause the two strikes before. You're a fucking asshole the fuck yeah someone's like you're an asshole what is good with you someone said you made a mistake lied about it someone lost their work and then you don't feel bad because the other strikes weren't caused by by you yeah everybody's tight in these comments someone's saying you're just saying the other strikes to justify what you did let me yeah let me just say this yeah everybody's coming for him in the comments see our situations are very different this i never wanted my friend to get fired okay and like i don't even want y'all to look at me don't even think about that for this it's ridiculous you know what i'm saying it's like it's simple it's so simple it's just morals it's just kindness it's karma it's like you know good luck good luck in the next job you find hopefully you don't get strikes and someone snitch on you lies on you and then you're like I wonder what happened. I did such a good job here. You know, I always showed up to work, and then I would always just be in trouble. I don't get karma. Karma. Because why would you do that? You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's really all I have to say. Like, I was going to say, you know, okay, yeah, you're fucked up, but, you know, I get the nerves and the anxiety. No, it's like that last sentence. I'm good on that, like, f this guy i'm so sorry about it like i'm gonna have strong opinions for this story because it's like who do you think you are you can't drive one two you probably made more scratches probably got other people fired like a bozo and then three you want to say i didn't cause the two strikes before it's one thing you know what i really hate is a bozo ass person stupid ass person and then they say well you can blame me for that, but you can't blame me for Shut your mouth. We're talking about this right now. Mm. And the fact that this person didn't delete this story after the fact, like, you're done. You're so done. Submit to the email down below. If you have an attitude like this guy, reconsider, because 
I'm not gonna be nice about it. <laughs> no, but it's like, I mean, comment on me. What do you guys think? Like, that wasn't okay. Like, I really don't think that was okay. I don't. I really don't like his attitude at the end. It's like someone saying, I found $100 on the floor. I feel so bad about it. I could have turned it in, but why did you leave your dollars on the floor? Sucks for you. Shouldn't have left your money on the floor. What are you on? Does that make sense? Yeah, I don't want you guys to assume that I... I don't know. Something about this just rubbed me the wrong way, and I don't want to... I'm projecting or feel like I'm coming off a certain way on camera, but it's like, that doesn't even matter. It's like, what he did was wrong, you know what I mean? It's like, like I said from the beginning, own up to your shit. No, that was actually me. If you didn't have strikes, then why the fuck? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, take your one strike and move. You have a strike now. Like, why are you giving it to other people? Be responsible. That's it. That's all I have to say, okay? But I will do a bonus story for you guys because these were very short, which I did not notice. But let's do the last story of the day. And this comes from the favorites. Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for scolding my struggling sister when she gives us grief about adopting a baby? Mm. Let's get into it. My sister's 35. Her husband's 37. They have been struggling with infertility since they got married 12 years ago. That is heavy. They tried everything. Medical, spiritual, and unfortunately nothing has worked. Now that she's approaching her late 30s, they started looking into adoption, but it's always been a slow-going process since their financial condition isn't exactly stable, especially because of all the fertility treatments they went through. Before I even continue reading the story, please stop having kids if you're not financially prepared. I don't even think I need to explain that. Just please be mindful, okay? So she says, I sympathize with my sister. But the stress the situation is bringing to her and her husband puts a strain on their relationship and our relationship. My husband and I both lost our best friends. And okay, so that she was saying the name, so I don't want to say them on the channel. So basically, the sister and her man, they lost their best friend in a car accident. um, And they left behind their son. The friends left behind their son. Um, And the son was like barely two years old. It was sudden. And they're grieving. So right now, basically, they're taking the baby under their under their wing. Yeah, so basically, the friends, the sister and the husband, the person writing the story, is the godparents to the baby whose parents died. So they're, like, grieving. Now they have a child and all that. And, yeah, they made sure, like, if there was any living relatives that could take the baby in, and they couldn't. So they has, has decided to adopt Pete. Um, and they're still grieving the, fr- the loss of their friends. And this sister and this husband never plan on having kids. And if they did in the future, this isn't how they wanted to do it. They're basically doing this for the baby's safety at the end of the day. So they tell the family too, which includes the uh, the other sister and her her man, you know, the one that are actually paying for the baby treatments and all that. Um, They tell everyone, hey, we have to adopt a baby. Like, we might not be as available as we used to be. So it turns out, after the news comes out, the sister... And her man, they come to the one that had finally adopted the baby because of the accident. They're crying on their doorstep saying it's unfair, that they got everything they wanted, that they don't deserve to be parents. My husband kicked them off our front porch. I mean, yeah, because it's like, what are you? Yeah, so the sisters start fighting now. She's like, if my situation is such an inconvenience to you, so unfair to you, I don't need to see you, period. Because, I mean, yeah, it's not about, it's not about them. I'm just trying to read the rest. Yeah, she's just saying, like, we're grieving. Like, we lost our friends, and now we got to take care of their son. Like, the son looks like the parents and all that. Like, this kid lost his parents, and now we need to adopt him. And so, yeah, people are saying, I don't know why your sister thinks you're about to give the baby to her. Which is true. Is like, at the end of the day, with life in general, right? Sometimes you work really hard. You put your best foot forward. You show up, you do the homework. You know what, this, I'm gonna use this perfect example. Cause I wanna talk about my pet Ben, okay? If you've seen Ben, I've used to always talk about Ben. Ben is resting in peace now. Ben and I and my partner, we had our first pet together, a ferret. If you know anything about the ferret industry, they are bred horribly, meaning, 
Um, it's luck of a draw. You might get a really sick pet, not even know it. Or you might get a good one and it'll last for years. Ferrets are supposed to live up to nine years, okay? Ben lived one year and a half. We, my partner and I, we're very responsible, especially when it comes to pets and kids. Like, we understand those are, like, the angels of society. Like, you're supposed to respect these people, these kids, these pets. Like, they are just sweet little innocent things and if you're the adult you can you're supposed to show up for them supply whatever we did everything right we did everything right okay we fed ben the proper nutrition we bought him so much shit so many fucking toys we had we ran up like 5k in medical treatment so basically ben had cancer there was nothing we could have done to avoid it. It was just the luck of the draw, like I told you guys. In the process, we have played it with several people. I don't think they'll ever see this. I don't know. And they don't really know why we couldn't. We just cut them off because they just seem like drama. But anyways, um, ferrets, like... Ugh. They have a strict diet, like, they can't, there's not, like, a fucking dog. Like, you can't just feed it french fries and fucking cat treats. Like, ferrets are, like, very expensive, very serious to take care of. It's an exotic animal. And we did, you know, at some point, we couldn't afford or keep two ferrets because it's optimal that they have two as a pair because they like to play with their friends and whatever. So we were like, okay, well, we're not in the best situation to be having too so we'll just always find a play date for ben and through the playdates we met some amazing people really amazing like we're friends with these people still but there's other people we're not right so the people we're not friends with anymore um and it was it was nothing against it's just a feeling i have at the end of the day i don't know if my partner feels the same or whatever but i'm talking about i'm using this example for this story right where you do everything right, we fed Ben everything, we took care of him, we bought an AC, like everything, like we made sure um, temperatures were right, we always took him to his appointments, we never neglected his health, we always bathed him, we always, you know, bought the right shampoos, like not even shampoos, like oat baths, like you know, what you're supposed to do. We did our research, we joined all the forums, we researched, and it was never enough, like Ben was not meant to live. And that's the sad truth. And when, you know, a part of me, after the fact that Ben passed away, it was just like, dog, it sucks because there's nothing we could have done to save Ben. And we are such great parents, like pet parents. And you have, from what we saw, they would feed their fucking fair at McDonald's. Like shit like that like I don't even remember like they look like malnutritioned like they would treat it horrible (laughs) would not treat it horrible give them horrible treats um and and who knows what else you know what I'm saying so it was like you know what I mean it was like and no we never went up to these people and said you know what Ben died and it's so unfair that you guys just disrespect your ferrets and treat them like shit like do you know how many people have ferrets right now and they don't know what the hell they're doing you know what I mean it's like it just is what it is but we're not sitting here you don't project like you know it's a thing about projection in this situation it's definitely projection like it's um and and I just want to clarify like of course I feel horrible talking down on that person's situation because it's like who knows maybe they couldn't afford it having a pair is very fair is very expensive and i understand that but they would ask us for advice on how to do things right and we would tell them all the time and they would just keep asking and of course when you act when people ask you for advice and they just don't fucking take it and keep asking that's mad annoying but eventually we're like they're just a little annoying like we don't really want to talk to them anymore so that was that but um you know it's like yes this sister that can't have a kid yes it's sad girl trust you're not the only one dealing with this like like for me we all wish we could have had a the goal was to have a ferret for nine years and I'm for this lady her goal was to be have a baby be fertile like have kids ASAP and it just hasn't been working for her me and my partner can get another ferret and the same thing can happen again which is why we haven't right but that doesn't mean 
that me and my partner are going to go to whoever has bought their fair and now the fair has we have friends who do have a fair that we're cool with right um and their fair has like it came from a bad situation and it still lived through that and it's like no we'd never project we're never like oh, how unfair how unfair that your fair gets to live and ours had to die like you know what i'm saying it's like you you never want to project to anyone even in general terms, if you're a friend and you have the same business, if y'all both sell purses, do not tell your friend how fucking unfair is that. Like, that's just so ugly. You know what I mean? It's like, just and, and just because people are family, you don't say certain things just because you think, well, this is my sister and she needs to know how I really feel. You don't need to say that, okay? Like, these people, like, like we said, they didn't even want a kid. Like, they're like, oh, like, damn, this sucks. Okay, yeah, the sister could have been nice and said, okay, I know you want a, a, a child, so here. But that wasn't what the parents intended. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, the person's, this baby lost its parents. And the baby's life continues on now with the parents' wishes, which was, these are the godparents. Not you, and not your sister and her man, you and your man. So the sister needs to grow up a little bit and respect that. I understand for infertility, and I understand all of that. I'm not, of course, I'm not erasing that or comparing it to owning a pet. But you know what I'm saying? It's like, in life, you know, and that's fine if you disagree with me and you're like, no, she needs to have the baby. I would hope that if I, fingers crossed, hopefully not, knock on wood, if I had to pass away and I have a kid, please do what the fuck I said. Like, if it's one thing about me, if I tell you to do something, don't play with me and do something else. <laughs> okay, because I will be wherever I am. Like, bitch, where, why is my kid at so-and-so's house and not yours? You're the godparent. What the fuck is, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, she lost her friend. Her and her man lost their friend. And you can't even be there for your sister right now? Because you can't have a kid? Like, you've been dealing, what does she say, 12 years? You've been dealing with this for 12 years. Your friend, your sister just lost her friends and now has to be a mom. Do you know how ugly it is? Like, they could have, the sisters could pair up, the one that's been wanting to have a baby and, I'm, of course, has been researching. You could help your sister so much right now. If you weren't such a negative ass, you could be there for your sister and be around a baby and soothe and help your stress with the fact that you're dealing with infertility to be around a baby do you know how many people don't have access to being around a baby like it's not all of us can have like a baby around us to, to have baby fever and stuff like you know what i'm saying so it's like <sighs> shame on her like and I agree, like, cutting off the sister is, like, what else can you do? Like, you're not about to come here with your negativity and make it about you because it's not about you right now. I lost my friend. I ha I'm, ha I'm having to raise an orphan. Like, I'm sorry if that's a um, disrespectful term, but, you know, that's all I know is what that's called when people don't have, when, have the, when they have a mom and dad that passed away. Um, and now they have to prepare and think about the future what do we tell the baby how their parents die they have to deal with funeral expenses helping move the baby from their the old house to the new house like i can't even imagine what that is like and i don't want to go on a tangent for the whole day but yeah guys um what do you guys think about this last story what do you think about all the stories comment down below which one you liked best or which one you have an opinion about i'm welcome you know welcoming the discussion the conversation in the comments below please fingers crossed please, please please commit to the email below send this video to your friends like submit it girl if you know me in real life send an anonymous email i won't even know it's you you know what i'm saying like submit to the email now more than ever again if you've ever heard any of my stories and there's a story of yours you do not want on my channel 1000 percent understand email me at the email below as well tell me i'll get rid of it tell me the timestamps. okay girl oh got you my bad and done okay you guys don't forget to follow me on the profiles i'm like i'm like trying to like don't forget to follow me on all of my social medias all of them and yeah guys let's get a conversation started and just let me know so submit at the story below i have an episode every week that's my goal um and i didn't say this before but i do also do 
hair videos so if you want to see some hair content curly hair natural hair content that is all over my channel too all over my socials so please follow me on all of those like share subscribe all of that fun stuff and i will see you next week